I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the game for your system. And I will be showing you my optimized settings as well. Let's start with the upscalers in motion. When looking at the weapon's edges, there seems to be trailing issues as is the nature with how TAA works. Switching to XASS, the issues in motion are still apparent. But what's even worse is the shimmering which is very distracting in motion. With FSR2, the trailing is even worse and most apparent here. This is generally how FSR2 looks. With DLSS, however, the trailing is almost unnoticeable. Therefore, DLSS has the best image quality in motion. And for static scenes, looking at this structure that I don't know what to call, Going from native to XESS introduces heavy ghosting and lots of details are now missing. With FSR2, the image is very comparable to native, but there seems to be some fizzling around some moving objects at a distance. Using DLSS, the image preserves more details and the aliasing is better, but some objects and particles in motion become smeared, comparing them all side by side. XESS screams to not use it. FSR2 surprisingly looks better than native 99% of the time. It also handles grass rendering the best. Both FSR2 and DLSS seem to be the best options here. Each has their strengths and weaknesses, with no clear winner. So use whichever you prefer, as both definitely look better than native, especially in preserving details. Moving on to asynchronous compute. It only improves performance on newer GPUs, and it decreases performance with older GPUs. So test it on your own system to find out. As for the texture quality, there are only two options, medium and high. There is a noticeable improvement on high, and the difference in VRAM usage is only around 500 megabytes in this scene. The LOD quality setting has two options and the difference is very subtle. In this scene, using high makes the bus and the dead body use their higher quality models and the performance impact is non-existent, so use high. The LOD range multiplier is the most impactful setting in the game. The game switched its default setting from 100 to 140 in a recent update, and going higher than that certainly looks better, but at a very high cost. The best balance seems to be 140. This is more of a future-proof setting to the game, so if you come back and play Dying Light 2 10 years from now, feel free to max it out then. For the motion blur quality setting, going from low to medium has a negligible performance impact, and using high has a noticeable performance impact. So if you like motion blur, use medium to save some FPS. The particles quality setting is supposed to affect fire, rain, smoke, etc. But I tested many scenes and just couldn't find any difference it made. I think it's broken even now, years later. Now for the sun shadows quality setting. Going from very low to low makes the shadows softer, and going to medium and high seems to look the same in this scene, and going to the ultra ray tracing option makes the shadows look totally different and believable. It definitely looks the best here. But, for the best balance, use low. The contact shadows quality setting is a weird one. Going from non to low adds some much needed contact shadows to the scene. But, going any higher doesn't seem to make any difference. And performance wise, once you turn it on, it's negligible and it performs the same across all the other options.
the ambient occlusion quality has an incremental increase in the strength of the effect with each option. While the ultra ray tracing option looks a bit too strong to my liking. The standard options perform around the same, while the ultra ray tracing option tanks performance. So use high. The standard global illumination quality options are almost indistinguishable from each other, except the ultra ray tracing option, which looks much more accurate. The performance between low, medium, and high is very similar. And of course, the ultra ray tracing option tanks performance as usual. I'd recommend to just stick with high. The reflections quality setting on low has almost no reflections, and each option further increases the quality and amount of objects that can be reflected, while the ultra ray tracing option totally changes how the game looks. For the best performance, go with medium, and if you have spare performance, I'd suggest you increase the setting as it does look really good. The ray traced flashlight setting has a very nice look to it, but at a very high cost to FPS, to the point where even if you have the setting enabled and the flashlight turned off, your FPS will decrease. So, disabling this setting is a no brainer. In previous versions of the game, the fog quality setting used to have a noticeable impact to the image quality, but now, for some odd reason, the options all look the same across the many scenes I tested. However, the performance impact is still there, so, at least for now, keep this setting on low for basically free FPS. Changing the post-processing effect has no impact to performance or image quality. Maybe it makes a difference somewhere, but I couldn't find it. Perhaps it's just broken. Comparing the max settings, which has the ray tracing effects enabled and maxed out LOD range multiplier to the optimized settings at native 1440p. Performance has considerably improved, going from an unplayable and cinematic average of 24 FPS to an average of 60 FPS. The VRAM usage has decreased from 9.4 GB to 7.8 GB, which is just under the 8 GB VRAM limit that many GPUs have. Turning on DLSS quality increases the average FPS even further, making this system average over 80 FPS, and VRAM usage is now lowered by an extra 200 MB. I've calculated the performance increase when going from the max settings to the optimized settings with DLSS quality, and the increase in FPS is around 252%. That's just incredible and it proves just how scalable this game really is.